today uh, is a little bit more on Rhino 4 and uh, again we're going to have a look at uh, the Flamingo NXT beta and a little bit more into just one of the attributes under the control panel tab. So what we're going to look at today I was hoping is just a very simple look at some of the environment settings. So if you look at there we've got those four tabs which we've spoken about before render which I've got set to a thousand pixels wide just for the presentation lighting which I've got set to one of the presets of exterior daylight which is suited to this architectural model materials which we've spoken about briefly before today I was hoping to just look at the environment settings and in particular the background so when we go to exterior daylight there the automatic setting for that is for a standard automated sky setting. So if I just press render on that, hopefully it'll come up with an automatic sky background. And that affects the reflections in the scene as well. So if I just stop that rendering, that'll be our default. Takes a moment to stop. Okay, and we go back to this environment tab again just to illustrate. Flamingo NXT tab, roll down to control panel, then you'll get the main control panel coming down, up, and then you go down to this background setting and you click on where it says background type, and you've got a whole range of selections to choose from. Now, if you're doing a quick rendering that doesn't require a photorealistic result, you can click solid color or in this particular case I've got it set to black it's really useful if you're cutting the image out and doing some post work if you just have a solid color because then when you go into Photoshop you can ask it just to select that color and it will select that color selection and then you can cut that from the scene and do all of your post work so I find that's quite a useful setting of itself even though it seems quite simple okay so when it renders this time You see, nice and straightforward, just a plain black background. And if I was to select black, it would pick everything up in black and then cut that out clear of the image. So if I wanted to float a sky or a, a, a background of the city behind this building, uh, I could drop that photo in behind quite easily. Okay, I'll just stop the rendering. We'll go to a few others. Okay. Now we go to two color gradient. Now this is a handy one if we're doing quick renders and we don't want to uh, select any particular sky or a photorealistic sky. It's quite handy sometimes to adopt these stylized approaches because they look quite fine. And the first thing we need to see when we select a two color gradient, this little icon pops up on the left hand side here. And this governs how we control the distribution of that gradient. So if we want to move the white up slightly, we grab the blue curse, the blue little arm. And if we want to move the blue up, there we go, we move the red arm. Okay, so we're going to make it quite narrow in our field of view, and that grey is our field of view. So it's going to be a tight little transition there. Again, I'll just press the render key. which is that blue button, which we've pointed out before. And there you see, it is transitioning down to white at the bottom, blue at the top. So we've got a fairly sort of stylized sky setting. Okay, just stop that. Now, if we're doing something a little bit more complicated, particularly with an industrial designs type of topic and we want a, a three color rendering. For example, if we want a dark blue at the top, uh, spreading to white in the middle and then dropping down to a violet tone underneath. We'll just swap those around. There we go. And again, we'll spread Time the gradient out a little bit, make that up there. 
See, this allows us to just adjust where the gradient places itself within the field of view. And there you can see purple at the top, blue fading to through to blue at the bottom. Okay, I'll just tighten that up a little bit. Just taking a moment to stop. Okay, oops. Back to our control panel. You notice then I just clicked on this little bar down here, get angles from view, and it automatically adjusted to the view. What we'll do is we'll replace the white with a red this time, just a little bit bolder. Now, obviously, this isn't perfectly suited to an architectural topic, but it just shows you the variations we can get, particularly if we want something dramatic and atmospheric in the shot. Post-apocalyptic, you might say. Some bushfire rolling through the area, perhaps. Okay, so rendering option three. So gradients, good for just quick stylistic renders. It's just stopping and we'll go to one more. Okay, last one, where are we? There we go. We'll just select an image. There we go. And you can see what I've done is in Adobe Bridge, I have a selection of sky types that I have in my entourage file. Just move that to one side. And if I, where are we, where's our control panel gone? There we go. And if we click on that large rectangle there, it'll ask us which image that we want. I'll just cancel that. There's the sky that we put in there before. We've got a number of options here as to how we place it, planar, cylindrical, or spherical. Now in this case, since we're just doing a single view, I'll just go with planar. Okay, cancel, sorry. There we go. And render the view. And you have whatever image that you want placed behind your 3D model put in shot. So typically a sky background or a photograph of the, the site from that particular position is a handy one to go with. Okay, so that was a very simple one, slowly building up these, uh, these little videos. So just to recap, once it stopped, now this one was very straightforward today. All you do, all we've been talking about is the Flamingo NXT tab, scrolling down to control panel, and then the various options that we have for backgrounds. So we have a solid color, a two color gradient, three color gradient image, and a, a high dynamic range image, which we won't cover today. Okay, so just showing you the results on that. That's what we got with a, a bitmapped image. Three color gradient, two color gradient, uh, another two color gradient, and a single color. And this one is particularly useful for doing uh, post work in Photoshop. Okay, hope that's of use to everyone today and you're finding these of some interest. Okay, all the best.